All you need to know about reinforcement in concrete 3D printing. In previous videos, we looked at the special mixes used in 3D printing, and most of the mixes were modifications of regular concrete. The point of the modifications was to increase the strength and workability of the concrete. Similarly, concrete reinforcement methods for 3D printing requires modifications. Traditionally, regular concrete is reinforced with steel for construction work, but that is not exactly the easiest option, even though it's still used with 3D printing. Moreover, the general absence of formwork in 3D printing makes reinforcement even more complicated. In view of that, this video will be an overview of the available reinforcement methods for 3D printing applications. Reinforcing 3D printed concrete improves its tensile strength and ductility, which can be achieved differently. Meshes, bars, and fibers are just some examples of materials that can be used for reinforcement. Other than the materials used, the methods used to reinforce the concrete can serve as a basis for classification. The method of placement is one of the classifications, and it can be further subdivided into three categories, namely pre-installation, co-installation, and post-installation. Meshes that are pre-installed before the concrete is printed is a great example of pre-installed reinforcement, whilst concrete mixes that are specially formulated with fibers for strengthening are a form of co-installed reinforcement. Now let us take a closer look at some of the common types of reinforcements used for 3D printed concrete, rebars. Rebars are one of the most popular reinforcements used in traditional concrete systems. They're readily available and effective, nor do they need formwork. Using rebars for reinforcement can be done through co-installation, where trusses made from a bunch of rebars that are welded together are laid between layers of concrete during the printing process. Or they can also be pre-installed by erecting them around cages, serving as a framework for concrete to be printed around to construct walls or beams. TU Braunschweig also developed another way of using rebars where they are used as the basis of a skeletal core structure onto which printable concrete can be shotcrete or sprayed. And this is why rebars are so popular. They're incredibly versatile and cost-effective to boot. Reinforcement Meshes Meshes are also a popular option for passive reinforcement in construction. Just like rebars, the meshes are welded together and laid between layers of printed concrete slabs. This process does not require any formwork either. Sometimes meshes are also used both as reinforcement for the dried concrete and as a modified sort of formwork to support the printed concrete in its fresh state. To achieve this, multiple spools of mesh are simultaneously unwound right ahead of the printer nozzle. Fiber Reinforcement 3D printed concrete is more susceptible to shrinkage, cracking, and thermal stresses because of the high cement content and hydration rate requirement. One of the advantages of using fiber in the concrete mix is that it dramatically reduces the cracking and thermal stress effects. Properly aligned fibers as reinforcement also provide high toughness and stiffness, perfect for printing shell structures. Fiber reinforced concrete can also be used to print formwork due to its high tensile strength. In addition, polypropylene and basalt are two kinds of non-structural fibers that can increase the cohesiveness of the concrete mix which is essential for printing. Clearly, the use of fibers as reinforcement in 3D printing has many advantages. Mesh molding. Mesh molding was developed at ETH Zurich, a public research university in Switzerland. With this particular reinforcement technology, dense meshes are welded together at the construction site using robots means. The meshes are molded according to the specific form requirements and loading. Mesh molding effectively eliminates the need for special formwork in constructing load-bearing structures and curved wall elements. The concrete mix used for the printing has to be tweaked a bit to work with this kind of reinforcement, though. The concrete needs to be adjusted so that it retains cohesiveness and workability. Smart Dynamic Casting ETH Zurich has more than mesh molding technology to its credit. Smart Dynamic Casting is currently being developed at the university. STC uses slit forming and printing material technology concomitantly to produce complex geometric structures and varied cross sections with minimal formwork. Like traditional concrete casting, reinforced bars are pre installed 
and the consistency and flow of the concrete mix are modified so that it can retain its shape even before it can support its weight. Smart dynamic casting is indeed a smart solution because it allows traditional methods of reinforcement to be used, while also paving the way for hybrid solutions. Hybrid reinforcement techniques Hybridization often gives the best of both worlds, and reinforcement in 3D printing makes use of that. Mesh mold technology can be combined with SDC to greatly increase the production speed of highly automated elements. Similarly, the technology used for printable fiber reinforced concrete can be combined with other methods of reinforcement to produce high quality, durable concrete structures, cables. When 3D printing complex shapes, it may be difficult to provide sufficient cover concrete, which makes reinforcement difficult. In such a scenario, high-strength galvanized steel cables can be used to provide the necessary reinforcement. The cables can either be extruded simultaneously alongside the concrete, or they can be laid down between layers of concrete. But this form of reinforcement needs special attention because the bond between the cables and concrete can be touchy. Post-tensioning cables Post-tensioning cables serve more than one function in the 3D printing process. On the one hand, they provide active reinforcement for the cast concrete, and on the other hand, they help connect the segments to create a load-bearing structure. To use post-tensioning cables, concrete segments are initially printed with holes for the cables to pass through. After passing the cables through the holes, they are then filled with grout to seal them up. In TU Eindhoven, a public technical university in the Netherlands, a 3D printed bicycle bridge was reinforced with post tensioning technology by running high strength cables through pre printed segments at right angles to the printing direction. External anchor connectors. This reinforcement technique has the unique advantage of enabling lightweight units to be fabricated at a faster speed. The units can be arranged on site in a free form manner according to the building requirements. However, the reinforcement is done using exposed threaded bars so they can get corroded if installed in an outdoor setting. Anchor connectors are placed in truss elements to connect them to smaller units using the threaded bars that are unfortunately prone to corrosion when used outdoors. Topologically optimizer truss shapes can be created to save materials and hence cut down costs for the construction process. In addition, more elements besides beams and arches can be created by connecting the anchors either through in-plane or out-of-plane threaded rebars. Not all reinforcement techniques are created equal, and some of the most basic types of reinforcement do not blend well with 3D printing. For example, simply adding fibrous material to the concrete mix is an easy way to reinforce it, and it has been done for ages in traditional concrete work. But when it comes to 3D printing, this effective and simple method of reinforcement can disturb the extrusion process, get in the way of the printing work. Given how primitive 3D printing appears relative to traditional construction methods, there is a serious need for better techniques and more variations, and the quality and future of 3D printing are significantly dependent on the materials used. For 3D printing to enjoy more widespread use, it has to be effective, both in terms of labor and in terms of cost. Thankfully, researchers are stepping up to the challenge, with some suggesting devices attached to the extruder that would be able to insert the reinforcement materials in a more intelligent manner. Such a device could be controlled using software designed to deploy the right reinforcement pattern within the printed concrete for optimum strength. Other research suggests that steel reinforcements in order may not be entirely necessary to provide stability for 3D printed structures. Construction with steel reinforced concrete generates a large amount of CO2, and it is very wasteful. In trying to reduce labor costs, material costs rather shot through the sky because more materials are needed for non labor intensive construction. ETH Zurich Architects and Engineers, along with Zaha Hattie Architects, constructed a 12 by 16 meter arched footbridge in a park in Venice without using any reinforcement whatsoever. Striatist was built with concrete blocks through an additive process and bore a close resemblance to conventionally constructed concrete bridges. Striatist owes its entire stability to its geometric shape since it has no reinforcements. What makes this bridge so unique is the concrete that was used to print it. 
Sure, 3D printers use special concrete mixes, but this bridge was constructed using a completely unique mix, which was developed by the researchers together with the company Incremental 3D instead of applying the concrete horizontally as it is usually done. They applied it at specific angles to make it orthogonal to the flow of compressive forces. That way, the printed layers fit together snugly with a need for any reinforcement or post-tensioning. Also, because the mortar was not used in the construction, the bridge can be dismantled and reassembled at another location if needed. The blocks can be separated and recycled when the entire construction is no longer needed. So there you have it. In the end, knowing about reinforcement of concrete could be as critical as watering a plant at least each day for 3D house printer users. It's the core material used to facilitate the process to boot. Hopefully, this video guides you through what you need to know about them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and while at it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.